This is the last of my three-part devlog series. As one of the contestants on Vim Lark's Ready Set Jam, it was now down to Helper Wesley and myself to see who could take out the second series. In this final round, we had to make a brand new game with the theme of power sources and restriction of achievements. I was keen to make a platformer as I hadn't made many before and thought the theme of power sources would lend itself well to some interesting puzzle mechanics. I had this idea we had to push batteries around and connect them to receivers that powered up gates and lifts which you needed to use to progress through the game. I thought I could incorporate achievements by having collectibles scattered throughout the level and use those to unlock cutscenes. The story I came up with was quite simple. A couple of bored kids are hanging out on the couch when an ad for the latest and greatest video game, Apes with Grenades, is shown. The problem is they have no money, so the main character in the game needs to set off in an abandoned factory to collect enough cash to buy the ape game. There would also be additional hidden cash scattered throughout for additional endings which would make the game also meet the restriction of achievement set for the jam. I first worked on some simple movement in Game Maker, utilising the physics engine specifically to make pushing batteries around work easier and save time coding all that myself. I played around with art in A-Sprite and ended up with this high resolution vector style for the character. Instead of moving to a more suitable tool for vector art, I decided just to stick with A-Sprite which is usually reserved for low res pixel art, don't ask me why. Next was adding in the art and coding the mechanics for the batteries. I rely on the physics engine for the movement and check the collisions with the battery receiver area which then opens a gate or powers up a lift. I'll position these in specific ways to create some different puzzles in the levels. I wanted some hazards in the game, and a typical trope in platformers are spikes, so I added some in. I also added in some operational saws, as typical abandoned factories in video games have operational saws, so along with some puzzle elements there are now some precision platforming elements. Next was on to level design. I set up the game to have a large main hallway and 10 small rooms. Each room would have two doors, one you come in from and another you need to exit out of. You would need to push the batteries around in certain ways to power up a specific gate or lift that would allow you to exit out of the level and progress through the game. Each of the small rooms have cash. These are obvious to the player when they enter the room. They would see the first objective is to collect the visible bit of cash and the next would be to try and leave the room through the exit door. I'll be discussing some secrets in my game next, so I'll spoil a warning for those that wanted to try it out first. You can find a link to it in the description. So collecting the visible cache in each level will give the player the first ending cutscene. However, I added in a couple more additional cutscenes that are unlocked by finding the hidden cache within the game. Some of it is hidden behind these fake wall panels. I tried to visually differentiate these fake walls from the real ones by giving them a slight slant and hope that observant players would notice it, see it looks a bit off and take a closer look. Unfortunately, it seemed everyone that played the game missed that detail. So I'd say the implementation of those fake walls was a bit of a fail on my behalf. I liked how your goal was to collect the cash, but as I played through the game, I did miss some and I didn't realise that doing so would not let me finish the game. After I beat the final room, I still needed one more stack of cash and had no idea which room I'd left it in. Another piece of hidden cash was putting in one of these crates. In one of the level, the crate gets pushed off the platform and you can see it starts breaking. Luckily I had a few more people clue in on this bit of hidden cash, although not everybody was pleased with the way I hid it in the game. I mean, if it's in the barrel, because you have to break the barrel, I'm gonna be upset with you. Just, just, just putting it out there. Last few things I needed to do were finish off the cutscenes, do a bit more playtesting, fix bugs, and put together a menu. I was then good to submit the game. Overall, I was quite happy with the way the game turned out. I thought the movement of the character felt nice, and the art style, although quite simple, worked well in the game. I was happy I could add in some cutscenes to give it a bit of a simple story and some humour. I also felt they introduced a reasonable amount of puzzles into the levels to keep things interesting. Some things that I could have improved on was adding a variable jump height to the character to give the player a bit more control, especially on those precision platforming parts. Also, as it is a jam game, which is meant to be played quite quickly, I should have added some indicators to the rooms with the hidden cache and exaggerated some of the visual cues, perhaps by adding slight transparency to the fake wall so it's more obvious that something is behind it. I think the last level was also way too tedious. I noticed a few players struggle with it and get quite frustrated as you needed to align the lifts in a very specific way to finish it. My game was up against Helper Wesley's power management environment clicker game called Energy Supply. 
He did a great job nailing the theme and restriction and adding a huge amount of achievements and humour throughout the game. I strongly suggest you check it out too. A few weeks later we had the final result. I'm happy to announce that. I won the series. I was thrilled with the result and grateful I was given the chance to take part in a competition with such awesome game devs. I'd like to thank Vimlark for organising the jam and the judges for playing and rating my game. Knowing that Wallaba, Tim Ruswick and Sam Hogan have even seen my work is just an awesome feeling. It was a fun jam and it was great being in the final against Topper Wesley. I've gotten to know him more over the course of the competition and we have become good mates and developed a bit of a friendly rivalry out of it. He too has posted Ready Set Jam devlogs on his channel and they are definitely worth checking out. In my opinion, he makes way better videos than I do. But at least for now, I make better games. Bye!